please, uh, Alexander. Uh, relative frequency tables. So on three, one, two, three. All right, so if you notice from yesterday's lesson, yesterday's lesson just read, I can summarize data using frequency tables. Today it's what? Relative frequency tables. So it's building up on what we saw yesterday. So hopefully with the practice you got last night, hopefully that will be enough to, uh, you know, get us where we're at today, okay? So let's see. We don't need a Frere model because we already covered uh, the Frere model yesterday for frequency tables. Is that correct? You also wrote steps yesterday that look like this. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So today, let me switch to my PowerPoint. Today we're going to focus on two-way relative frequency tables, but like always, yesterday we started with uh, one-way. So today we're going to start with uh, one way once again. So copy this one on your paper, please, and write example one. Do you agree that's a one way frequency table? Yeah, because it's only being filled all the way to the end to the right, one way, all the way through. So copy that, please, and uh, label it one way frequency table. All right, so uh, any questions on what we're looking at right now? No, right? This is a one-way frequency table. This is what we did yesterday. Today, we're going to introduce something that we call a relative frequency table. So we're still on the one-way frequency table. So look at this. Relative frequency table. You're like, it looks the same, Mr. Q. Okay, so for right now, copy this and then I'll show you how to fill a relative frequency table. Give you a little bit more time for that. All right, so once again, one-way frequency table. This is one-way relative frequency table. So you're like, it looks the same to me, Mr. Q. Yeah, for right now. So writing utensils down, let me show you the difference from one to the other. Okay, so if you notice on the one-way frequency table, they just gave us data and we wrote it in there. Okay, straightforward, fill it in. We know uh, how to use a frequency table just by writing data in there. Okay, well, how do you use a relative frequency table? Well, let's first understand the first term, relative. So close your eyes really quick. And I want you to, I'm going to give you a word right now, and I want you to think the very first thing that comes into your noodle. Let's see. Relative. Tell your neighbor the first thing that you started thinking about when I said that word. Tell your neighbor, please. Okay. So, what were you thinking, uh, Jamie? Family. I heard cousins, grandparents, and so on and so forth. So, people that are related to you. Is that correct? All right. So therefore, same thing with this table, it, this word has something to do as to how we're going to fill this table right here, the relative frequency. So what does that mean? Well, in order for me to fill in my table, if I was to ask you, fill in the relative frequency for basketball. So look up, please. Watch. I need to fill in the relative frequency for basketball. So you're saying, okay, if it's relative, that means this score, I need to relate it to the total. And that's how I'm going to compute my relative frequency. So look at those two numbers. What do you think I would write here? Twenty over. 80 because it's 20 out of 80. Everybody see how we're relating this to the total? That's why it's called relative frequency because we're relating this number to the total number. Therefore, let's simplify this. Can we divide by 20 top and bottom? 
So it's one fourth, and what what is one fourth in decimal? Point twenty five. Copy that. That's how we fill a relative frequency table. And it has to be related to what, everyone? To the total. To the total. Now that I showed you how to do that, so I want you to fill in the rest of the table. It's fairly simple. Like I said, it's related to what we did. Get it? Related to what we did yesterday. Oh. Nice. Related, get it? Relative. Never mind. Because we did it yesterday, so it's related. Should have been in the in the what's gonna call it in the talent show. There you go. I'll give you some time to fill it out, please. Go. All right, so. Football. Uh, Roman Aguirre, give me the uh, relative frequency for football. No, tell me what to write on the stuff. 32 over 80. Divide by 8, so that leaves us with 4 over 10, which is 2 fifths, which is Point four, or point forty. Hands if you got that. That is correct. Now he reduced, but if you just did the division, that that's fine. But can you reduce to two fifths? What is two fifths in decimal? Point four. All right. How about soccer. Nate. Twenty-eight over eighty. Seven over twenty and. Point thirty five. How about the total? What do we write on the total? Jerry. Eighty over eighty because it's related to itself. Therefore, what is eighty over eighty? One. And who noticed this? Point twenty five plus point four plus point thirty five. That gives us point twenty five plus point four plus point thirty five ten zero one why does that work because with numbers let's see what is twenty plus thirty two plus twenty eight eighty and what is eighty over eighty one questions on one way relative frequency tables does everybody understand why it's called relative because each cell is related to what? Each cell is related to what? The total. Okay, so we got that. All right. So with that said, let's go to two-way. Copy this table, please. Example two. Mm -hmm. Two-way frequency table. Are you done? Everybody done copy? Once again, that's a two way frequency table. Two way frequency table. Everybody agree that it's a two-way? Yes? Tell your neighbor why it's a two-way frequency table. OK. 
Okay, because you can either fill it going to total on the right side or you can total by column. Everybody down? Yeah? All right, so now check this out. What is the next step? The next step is to fill in a relative two-way frequency table. So what, well, guess what I'm going to do? Let's go back to the previous one. What did we do on the previous one? Oh, sorry. Okay. Give me a second. So what did I do uh, to get a relative? I needed to copy the same table but without the numbers, right, in order to do the relative part. So guess what we're going to do for this one? Copy the, the whole thing but without what? All the data. So copy the same table, please, right underneath. So it looks something like this. And we're going to label this one what? That is correct. Relative two-way frequency table. Copy that. I'll give you some time. All right, so relative two-way frequency table. Now, as you can assume, we're going to do the something similar to what we did on the first example. But before we do, I want to make sure we understand, because now that we have a two-way frequency table, now the two-way has three different parts that I want to talk about. The first part has a term that's related to other things that you've done before. So once again, close your eyes. Let's see, I'm going to give you a term and see if what you can think of right away as soon as I say the term. When I say the word margin, margin, tell your neighbor what you think of when I say margin. <laughs> Paulina, what do you think when we say margin? A paragraph. A paragraph. Uh, who else can uh, give us an idea as to what we think? Yes, Car uh, Roman, Carlos. The space in between the side of the page and the beginning of your sentence, right? So what are we talking about? The edge, right? Well, guess what? In this table, the edges, when I ask you to compute the marginal frequency, they're only talking about the totals for one side and the totals for the other side. So I'm doing that in green. I'm boxing it in green, and I'm going to label those marginal relative frequency. Does that make sense? Because they're on the edge. Kind of like when in your paper when you're about to write something, it's on the edge. So that's why these are called marginal, those spaces. But not the whole this is the total total because everything's related to the total. That's why we don't do that one. Okay. So now that we have the edges, if I was to say, let's see, Jerry, can you give me one cell of the marginal relative frequency, what would you write and where? On basketball? Tell me what to write. And that becomes point twenty-five. That is correct. So when I indicate, find me the marginal frequency, what am I talking about? The total, the edges. Are we there so far? All right. However, notice that we haven't labeled these in the middle, right? Now check this out. I'm going to give you another word, see uh, what comes up. Uh, um, actually, no, let me explain something. Uh, most of us know about sports, right? Or we see sports or we are involved with sports. One of the uh, injuries that most occurs uh, in most sports 
It's either the ankle or the knee, right? So there's doctors that specialize in uh, therapy for the joints of our body. Does everybody know what joints are? For example, the elbow, the knee, the ankle, those are the joints because they join other parts together, yes? Well, guess what we're going to call these that are joined by the totals? Pretty much. We're going to call it joint relative frequency. So box this one in blue. These right here. And these are called joint relative frequencies. Frequency. Bless you. Because sometimes I'm not going to ask for the marginal. Let's say I wanted to ask only for the joint relative frequencies. So if I was to ask um, Leslie, C, if I was to ask you to give me a joint relative frequency, where would you start? Basketball? Basketball what? That six. Six over. Oh, sorry. Six over. Once again, we're, we're calling this what? Relative. What are we relating it to, everyone? The total, total. So therefore, 6 over what? 80. That is correct. Notice that on this one, I didn't shade the uh, total, total, because we're relating everything to that. So therefore, this is 3 over 40, and uh, whatever the decimal that is. OK? So the joint, fre so for, for tonight, let's say I just told you, fill in the joint frequencies. Are you going to do also the marginals? Nate? What? Good. I mean, you can do it if you want, <laughs> but do you need to do it? No, only the joint frequencies. Last one to label. Here we go. Let's say I said, okay, Maria, can you give me the frequencies only for all the soccer data? So everybody boxed in all the soccer in red. When I'm talking specifically only a certain data that I want you to fill in that is not joint or marginal, this is what we call conditional. Conditional relative frequency. Why is it conditional? Because the condition is what? That I only want what data for soccer? How about if I said, okay, um, Kylene, can you give me just the data for all the row for girls? Is that also conditional? Let's see. Let me highlight it. Is that also conditional, everyone? Yes, because we're just talking about the entire section for girls. That's a conditional relative frequency. So let's see all the, the three types of parts for the uh, table. Marginal, which are the totals and totals, yes? Joint, which is what's in between. Conditional, when they're talking about a specific part of the table. Everybody with me? All right, let's see how that looks. Okay, we got that, we got that. So we're talking about conditional. Soccer, so that means if I wanted just soccer, so then 18 over 28, 10 over 36, and this one only for this, so therefore 6 over, sorry, 6 over what? 36, 12 over 36, and 18 over 36. So the only time that we relate it to the, the, the total of the, of the row or the column when it's what? Conditional. Everybody see that? Yeah. All right. 
So for tonight, for tonight our home play is only pages 422 and 423, Marco Jordan. And it's very simple, simple to uh, what we did today. All you have to do is compute all the marginals, uh, joint, and conditionals. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy your home play. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.